Hello, I am Lieutenant Colonel Kathleen McGowan, part of the United States Army Heritage and Education Center team. Behind me stands a reproduction of a blockhouse. These type of structures were critical to the defense of our nation in the 18th and early 19th centuries. Even before the bombardment of Fort McHenry or the burning of Washington, when our nation's capital lay in smoldering ruin, the War of 1812 raged along the American frontier. The northwest frontier of the United States included the area in and around the Great Lakes. A company-sized unit of volunteers known as the Pittsburgh Blues dispatched to northwestern Ohio in early 1813. Among them was Private Nathaniel Vernon. As the winter of 1813 began to thaw, the Blues marched to Fort Meigs to reinforce its garrison. Brigadier General and later President William Henry Harrison was the American commander of this area of operations. He understood the strategic importance of Fort Meigs as a logistics base in supporting offensive operations into Canada. He requested reinforcements, including the Blues, to ensure this critical area remained under U.S. control. The Blues were brigaded with the Petersburg Volunteers and the Greensburg Rifles, likewise comprised of citizen soldiers. The British soon realized the strategic importance of the fort, and as the weather heated up, so did British efforts to capture it. The Pennsylvanians found themselves preparing Fort Meigs against an impending British assault. Vernon and his comrades sweated profusely in the efforts to hastily dig defensive fortifications out of the Ohio soil. The Western Pennsylvanians in its ranks were, in Vernon's words, as gallant a company of heroes as ever breasted the storm of war or contended with a malignant and merciless foe. The British began their first siege in May. By this time, the fort was, in Vernon's words, well defended by batteries and blockhouses on all sides of the fort. Our enemy could not approach without receiving our first fire in several directions. The blockhouses that Vernon was referring to were two-story structures that contained firing slits on the top floor and had room to accommodate an artillery piece and crew on the ground floor. The structures were designed to unleash their firepower in interlocking fields of fire against the attacker. The British opened the siege with an artillery bombardment throughout the day and continuing into the night, causing Vernon and his comrades to take cover within the fort. After an American raid on the British guns rendered them inoperable, the British commander, General Proctor, realized the futility of attacking the fort and abandoned the siege. The British would once more attempt to capture Fort Meigs in July of 1813, but in the confident words of Private Vernon, General Proctor paid us another visit at Fort Meigs, but finding us too well prepared, withdrew his forces. In August of 1813, General Harrison remarked upon the departure of the Pittsburgh Blues, I would rather see that I've a hundred militia leave than that one company. They have been the most subordinate and best disciplined company in the Northwestern Army. The mission of the U.S. Army Heritage and Education Center is to bring to life the stories of soldiers like Private Nathaniel Vernon through our archival holdings, our soldiers' experience gallery displays, and life-size exhibits along our Army Heritage Trail. Our collection spans the vast history of our Army from the cobblestone streets of Cambridge to the deserts of Iraq and the mountains of Afghanistan. Most importantly, we are interested in the stories of the individual soldier. So whether you served as a nurse in Saigon or a vehicle operator in Kandahar, from private to general, your story is important in creating this enormous tapestry that is the Army history. Thank you, and we hope to see you soon at the U.S. Army Heritage and Education Center.